would like to uh, move to the second segment of our presentation so uh, to do the honors uh, let me uh, introduce uh, other panelists of today's session uh, uh, joining with us mr anuruddha gamange uh, head and general manager human resources and corporate sustainability kalani valley plantation plc uh, which is under haley's plantation sector sri lanka and also uh, mr adrian pereira is an non executive director and practice holdings limited uh, so uh, with the introduction to uh, to uh, session uh, facilitators and also our main uh, facilitator is mr shani ranasinghe eh? so i would like to uh, take uh, questions uh, so first we are starting with mr anurudh gamme okay um, so uh can you sir, can you elaborate about your free thoughts on the experience and the background uh, about the topic what we are discussing it today uh thank you musamil and uh, thank you very much for cpm sri lanka it's great honor for me also to join this uh, uh time needed topic today uh well uh as i think i don't want to give uh, introduction for me that already musamil has done that part uh, so i have um, more than 25 years experience attached to agriculture industry um, so uh, basically i'm representing plantations and you know that is agriculture uh, if you take uh, the topic uh, the leadership perspectives on ad uh, adapting to esg reporting where i see before i elaborate anything on the topic related to my industry where I, my expertise knowledge and the uh, experience is uh, before that i would like to elaborate why uh, i am thinking as a representation from agriculture industry why this topic is so important because there are two uh, segments in this topic that is the leadership perspectives and this esg reporting so uh, 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 if you take agriculture in our country i think it is one of the uh, top priority sector in our country for for uh, uh, basically uh, the agriculture sector uh, is uh, fundamental to food security uh, you know that uh, meeting the uh, growing demand for nutrition affordable and safe food for uh, 10 billion people by 2050 that is a huge task to the entire agriculture industry and also if you take the significant impact on sustainable development uh, practices related to agriculture especially environmental uh, intensive use of natural resources such as land waters uh, so, etc etc so uh, all those things matters uh, for me uh, for me to uh, uh, get a kind of a high priority on this topic uh, why the environment the social and the governance governance part is these three pillars are really important in esg uh, bear uh, on my definition the uh, topic says esg but i would like to elaborate it little bit more than that on my definition it is a double esg because i want to take out the economic part separately because it plays because we are talking about corporate world end of the day all these factors has to be accumulated in one basket uh, as uh, ishani mentioned that okay we 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 are not uh, at the moment the current uh, corporates are not mainly focusing on the financial kpis but for for you to sustain the business you need that but the what is the demand for the uh, entire value chain across the globe that they are deviating from the uh, traditional uh, expectations of the corporates for an example if i uh, take some examples of uh, 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 certain uh, researches the certain literature uh, findings the evidence uh, according to uh, the uh, 2023 uh, 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 finders uh, uh, statistics that di discovered that 76% of uk customers uh, uh, will stop buying from companies that don't care about how they treat the environment and that is uh, really applicable to our industry as well for an example if i take plantation industry specifically under agriculture sector the buyers perspective especially from european uh, union countries they don't want just a product and service they they want a, a product uh, the the concept behind the product the conceptual framework behind the product and services 
otherwise uh, I, i think uh, we all know uh, the regulations the needs and requirements are rising the standards reporting standards are changing dynamic dynamism of change in all these principles and all those things that they have uh, pushed us to get a premium price on all these the products on on my sector the agriculture plantation sector and for us to fish those uh, uh, product and services based on this esg practices we are to match the niche market and ask for premium prices so that 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 uh, dynamic uh, equation is evolving so i think there is a, a strong need for uh, 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 a strategic wsg framework for each and every company especially in my on your question based on my experience in my industry it's it's a mandate now as we know that 2025 january from european union green deal that you can't excuse if you want to be a uh, uh, competitive in the european market for especially agri based products no way that you need to adhere it is way beyond the green washing just a simple concept beyond csr or whatever yes reporting is not merely will not adapt merely not will accept so we need to face that truth that is untold untold truth so we need to face as corporates uh, on a very a strategic vision uh, to report your esg and uh, muzamil uh, the top part of the of your topic the leadership you can't have magic end of the tail without a proper uh, uh, visionary leadership to drive a proper wsg framework thank you uh thank you mr anudha gamange for your uh, provoking uh, information on esg reporting and i would like to uh, move to the second speaker of the day mr adrian pereira so uh, we would like to uh, know about your experience uh, on leadership perspective on adapting to esg reporting with your experience over to you sir thank you musafir okay my my experience in highly diversified industries from so financial services to healthcare to agriculture so and being a former member and committee member of acc and sima so uh, my experience in uh, esg reporting yes i do agree with all the other speakers esg is a important thing especially the environmental and the social side and the leadership side and the governance side who i agree but when you go up in your career ladder you see there is a the i would say what would i say i would say the the reality becomes different what you see like professor said the social aspect we have seen although the uh, society i mean sri lankan culture let's look at it there are a lot of high unemployment high cost of living high poverty rate but still the corporates are making i mean huge utilizing that same despite exchange rate interest rates cost coming down not passing on that benefit to the society making huge we we'll call it prof, uh, profit gouging so which is creating a social unrest it is creating a social unrest this is the bigger problem than esg we saw what happened in 2022 so that is important in a leadership point of view at least question do, do we need a 60% margin if anybody says because i have some in depth information because i the industry i have been because i have diversified i see some companies are making 40 50 60% margin before the we say aragale or covid when they were make 20% they were happy now they get the opportunity and make 50 60% more which is which is it necessary i mean okay fine shareholders okay but do you know want to create a social unrest the other one is i would say a person who has organized this competition whether esg reporting has become a, another reporting or another award we have a lot of consultants who do it. sometimes a company has not even planted a tree coconut tree and a consultant does a fantastic report and it's a award 
we have to be honest with ourselves right so the leadership board leadership must take a firm sorry i have to be the devil's advocate here board leadership and senior look do we need to just to go for the award out are we really going to look at the society so that is i think very important when it comes to senior managers and young uh, growing up professionals because if you keep on doing this sooner or later it's going to blow up it blew up in 2022 right the third aspect are we going overboard why do i say that like anything else in this business world like it esg credit rating these all these concepts are developed by the west right these are western concepts sri lankan never we we had the esg for buddha's time to this is the stand we looked up our environment and society we leave that aside now in 2022 mike pence donald trump's second in command brought a regulation insurance companies it's the idea it's public it's can be was with journal do not need to look at esg reporting in their investments and they have also said the big boys the city the bank of america santander they do not they have not spent anything for this what you call cop copa commitments so you have to be careful when you are selecting these some of these things some of these western concepts are sometimes not in favor of us the eastern culture we have been practicing that long long time ago we have been practicing through our cultural heritage but some of them we have to be careful the most difficult thing in leadership is is esg reporting is a reporting are we going for a competition or are we really doing from our heart and we, we need to look at that aspect in the day do we need to get a consultant we usually i know okay i have also been in the corporate sector i know who are the consultants are who are doing these fantastic reports so that's fine right? let's say what ceremony it's a separate topic right? but how many companies are actually doing so benefit to the society and they are are they are we creating a time bomb so you creep on skimming 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 the society soon or later it's going to blow up it blew up once so i think those are factors as growing up i i'm sure i understand some of all of us are working employed so we can't go up against bosses they will tell you to ask him look you go and renovate a school you ask him give me 20 million to renovate a school they tell you jump off a cliff pay to pay the consultant and get a fantastic report so we can't go but i think in a small way at least we knew we need to look at that how we can actually help the society because that sc is a social thing is a serious thing in sri lankan current context for so of serious reason it's going to get worse it's not going to get better despite all these fancy stories so it's the the heat is picking up gradually so i think as a corporate sector we need to look at implementation with the in a small we don't have to keep on doing huge csr activities in a small way. how many corporates okay have taken the initiative okay we will renovate 10 schools or five schools in and make sure their public schools in outstation region i don't think it will cost 1 billion rupees maybe 10 million 5 million much more less much more lesser than the thick annual reports we pay sometimes 1 kilo annual reports we print so if you do that 220 corporates or 200 at least take corporates it we have ensured that 200 schools are in each take one right so i think that is something our corporate sector need to look at over to you musa yeah thank you uh, mr adrian uh, for sharing some bit truth about this topic for today and uh, with that i am moving forward to uh, mr shan ranasinghe uh, so based on your experience can you uh, just 
take through us on how the practice works in corporate world. Over to you, Mrs. Shah. Thank you, Ms. Amel. So I think I'm going to speak to you uh, in line with um, how we operate at Hamas. So at Hamas ESG or ESG reporting is embedded within our business model. It's a consideration that is taken into every business decision we make and it's it's almost taken as a management principle so because we have embedded it so much and entrenched it across all our operations what we have seen is very positive results so one thing is definitely as i mentioned before it has i know it seems like i'm always talking about risk but yes one of the key parts of esg is to mitigate the risks you have so it has helped us with that but also it has also helped us to identify any improvements we need within our business operation and also it has helped us to um, kind of bring forward and innovate it's also been a very key role in our employee engagement activity and also helped us attract top talent but one of the main things that it has helped us is all our initiatives have now been aligned to our business focus areas and our interests so this means uh you will very rarely see hemas or other organization i work in doing a project that does not have a long term impact or does not have an impact on our esg agenda or our strategy we have in place of course this changes i must say during like the last few years with the economic crisis there was a lot of work that we did in terms of emergency response but all our initiatives all our business decisions all our actions have been aligned to the strategy we have in place and this personally from what i see has helped our organization grow thanks okay thank you very much for sharing few uh, practical side of applying a leadership perspective on adapting uh, ESG reporting. So with that uh, note, uh, there's a special announcement on uh, our sponsors. So today's uh, the event 32nd uh, presentation, the proud sponsor of Mastercard. So we are thanking for their contribution, their sponsorship for this uh, session. And also uh, for participants, uh, so we see actively uh, more than 100 participants currently log into the webinar so we encourage you to actively participate by if you have any questions you can um, in a chat q and a chat you can always uh, share your questions uh, so when you're sharing please uh, put the key uh, presenter's name first and then um, share your present uh, question with us so it's easy for us to uh, read out when the last uh, segment we on uh, so with that note, I uh, move to the second round of panel discussion. Um, so uh, here we will discuss on certain questions, selected questions from all these uh, three speakers from corporate presenting corporate sector. So first start proceeding. Uh, I would like to go with Mr. Uh, Adrian Pereira. Uh, uh, the first question uh, from a Sri Lankan perspective. So how do you view the companies adapting to ESG in their companies, ESG reporting in their companies? So we would like to hear from you, sir. Uh, you are going mute. Okay, okay. Now can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So from a Sri Lankan perspective, I would say because now CAC also has mandated this thing, ESG. So companies are moving in to ESG. Some are doing it genuinely, I must say. Some are doing it silently, some are doing it publicly, that's fine. Some are doing nothing and but reporting also. So that is the key because we are a small country, right? If you are in a big country, you, you, you can get away with it, right? Right? But Sri Lanka in a small country and a volatile country, right? So I would say the Sri Lankan boards also not more than the, the younger management they they are educated like all our CMA, C, Chartered, CMA, CFS they know they are educated uh, the management rate. But at the board level, although they talk about it, it has become more of a I would say award kind of thing. 
how many awards we can bet right so that's why you can see the annual report becoming bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier right so i i, I think the important thing the coming managers and cfo c need to educate the board is okay what they need to educate that we need to at least do ensure that esg is to is implemented i know this is not a sometimes the the profit aspect of it is a, is a challenging thing because it's a uh, what attachment is you do not see the bottom line benefit of implementing esg immediately but over a period of time you will see the benefit so the challenge is how to get the bottom line and how to convince a board being a director okay i can tell you how to convince a when the cfo comes and says okay he have to invest in this convince a board okay without numbers you have to spend x amount of money so that would be the challenge for any senior manager any cfo ceo and supporting that kind of resolution so which i think going forward but uh, i on the other hand i would say the since the younger guys are getting educated and they are well aware so they should be able to do it over a period of time but sri lankan corporate sector over a period of time has caught up with it the younger people the not the i'm not with all due respect the some of the senior directors are still unaware so i see in some of the boards if you look at even the scc or csc regulation for governance code is also not uh, uh, properly implemented right so now if you look at the uh, csc regulations from uh, this year october over 70 years you, most of the uh, you are not eligible to become independent director right so now how how are we going to match that usually in a board it is a boy it's a club that comes in right so you you need to find new people brought in so you have to either bring the younger fellows in who might not agree with the old guys always right so you have to be careful on all that so i overall i think the uh, corporate sector is adapting it's a gradual change but it's a change is happening at least we are moving one step at a time so i think i think uh, going forward we should be able to bring some credible change okay okay thank you uh, for that insightful information so um, so i am moving to the second speaker mr shani uh, anasinghe so how can we ensure that our esg reporting is credible and transparent um, can you take us through sure thank you um so i think uh your report to be credible and transparency is very uh, important to have right for your success of that report so one of the first things you need to do is to use reliable data sources and here i think it's important that your esg teams or the teammates who's providing that information understands why this information is needed for and what it will actually do because this uh, we need to explain to them that this information is going to be used in from a reporting purpose and also as a b uh, to understand what a business performance is going to look like and also another thing it, that's important is that you follow an established reporting framework so this will give you guidance on how you need to do your reporting in terms of what your material topics are and then also it's important that you uh, obtain independent verification of that information you are reporting the minute we bring an independent verification in it shows that you're also transparent in your performance and that you know there is that second tier of our second layer of approval coming on that information you're presenting also i think it's very important that you're open in your communication to all your stakeholders on what your esg goals are and also when you're presenting your report you present it against those goals so you are able to kind of mark where you are each year according to those goals that you have uh, kind of uh, told your stakeholders 
Uh, thank you uh, for the information, Shani. And then I move uh, to Mr. Anuruddha Gamage. So, uh, so the first question is about why ESG reporting is important for companies. Um, yeah, Musamil. I think uh, before that, I think I let me explain uh, certain things on. Uh, uh, you for, for the moment you forget about this particular topic the two aspects but why are we uh, uh, talking about uh, ESG reporting uh, why, are, why, why are we talking about term ESG or the double ESG or whatever mainly in corporates uh, or uh, we are dealing with resources as we know those are the fundamentals I'm talking right so uh, the resource uh, utilization if you take uh, reason uh, as we all know, uh, the uh, uh, climate uh, change impact, uh, especially the rise in global temperature and uh, sea ice, is the, the, the decline of sea ice and expansion of sea level, and which has created a decline of uh, available land extent. And the other hand, the uh, resource consum consumption is not equally distributed across the uh, globe uh, and the uh, 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 for even the corporates to utilize and the other in the rising global population uh, specifically uh, in my in all all industry the global water demand so all these factors have given uh, absolute evidences on the sense of intelligent use of limited resources uh, uh, within our corporates so, uh, which has given an uh, eye opening for each and everyone. All, even, we, of course, we were practicing all those uh, environmental, social practices within our businesses, whatever, whatever industry we are representing, maybe last decades. But uh, are we on right track of collating all those things into one framework? So that is where the uh, somewhere in 2000, early 2000, early this. Uh, formal ESG reporting is coming into the action where uh, we need to think in corporate why we need to do this because uh, end of the day you need to take your product and service to the market where the uh, common communication platforms has to be there so for everyone in the global platform that they need to discuss this common terminology in one aspect one definition one framework so that is how it came but are we really into this are we really are we really doing uh practicing this uh, uh, uh the practices related to ESG reporting as adrian really pointed out uh take most of the corporates uh, uh we know that uh, for them to do proper ESG reporting they uh, the co corporate level they should have their formal uh ESG steering committees or whatever to drive these strategies where I see, in my experience, I have seen a lot of uh, uh, corporates, the disconnection between the execution parties, that is the uh, steering committee perspective, perspective, the leadership, where uh, most of the, the top leadership uh, personalities, they don't know what is actually happening in the corporate on the ground level on the CEC practice, but a lot of activities are happening. Where uh, we see this disconnection has created a uh, confusion among the stakeholder network. So I think because of that, I believe that we should have a proper transparent framework to report all these initiatives, most more importantly with the measurables. Because uh, in future, the storytelling scenarios will not accept. So you need to have evidences, data-driven culture, and you need to have kind of a uh, measurable uh, evidences where you need to go for your stakeholders. So because of that, for, for corporate to maintain their reputation, because there's a huge reputation risk on because of this ESG reporting, because whereas most of the more uh, some uh, there can be uh, genuine corporates there who, who they are doing a lot of uh, activities and absorbing those things into their business corporate DNA but whereas we see there are a lot of just simply practices where they want to uh, have a 
uh, they want to uh, define those mere practices into ESG where it is deviated from the uh, absolute ESG definition. So where we need to come uh, come to a common agreement uh, where uh, minimizing this vacuum and the gap of the top leadership and the, ex the execution parties within the companies should have a proper framework that is where the ESG reporting framework is needed. Where I'm believing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Anurudh Um And then uh, moving to the second round of questions. So, first uh, question, um, the second question with Mr. Adrian Pereira. So, what is the critical uh, success factor when um, the company embarks on ESG journey? Okay. I would say the proof in the pie is eating the pie, no? right? Or pudding or whatever, whatever, right? So if the company is practicing environmental, social governance standards, number one is as a, we are not, I'm not asking the companies to be a charity organizer, NGO, but show profits, number one. It must contribute to the society, number two. It must pay the taxes. We all know what the government is up in arms for not paying the taxes. So that shows there's a serious issue on that, right? We all know that society as the social structure, fabric is breaking up now because of cost of living, because people don't have salary increments, right? We, we, we saw during tsunami, I mean, COVID time, how many companies let people go, understand, understood. Although they made profit, did they re-employ? We all know that. So I think end of the day, ESG reporting is one thing, ESG practicing is another. So we need, companies need to show, okay, we are also practicing that. And there's a bottom line benefit. So that is how to get that bottom line benefit is up to the management. Not to get a consultant, okay, I can write a fantastic annual report, write PDF copy, put some soup pictures, right? That's not it, right? So how to show that bottom line benefit to the board, right? Today I show this, okay, this will give the profit in two years, right? We are not asking immediate benefit. We saw some time back certain government official try to do organic agriculture and what where we tended up to right so we shouldn't go to do, do those kind of uh, stupid things you know it's a crazy thing as a person who has been doing organic agriculture i do agree it's good but overnight no you made the whole country starve so we can't do that right so those kind of decisions we have to select things that will benefit the society over a period of time so the same way in the center of corporates we have to ensure the company benefits over a period of time and start implementing those things maybe education maybe healthcare maybe self-employment right so those things will benefit because when the society when people have money when the society is happy only they will help them they will buy the company's goods and services because if the company does uh, does not have the people does not have money, then obviously companies also does not have money, right? So I, I think uh, uh, end of the day, the proof is by investing in ESG activities, whether you can the company can benefit and the society can benefit. So how to prove that is up to the senior management. How to quantify then prove it to the board. Assume the board is, I mean, being in a board director, I can tell you sometimes, okay, right, fine. It gives the award, you can push it through, right? So how to push it to the board? Justify, quantify. So here the challenge is that for the C, not to write reports because otherwise the report automatically gets bumped off. So challenge for the senior management, the CFOs, the CEOs. Okay, investing in this, what is the benefit to the company? What is the benefit to the society? 
those two questions if we can answer in quantifiable terms i would say that's a challenge that's a starting point what to do okay thank you very much and uh, my second question to ms ishani our industry is in traditionally focused on um, esg issues so how can we make it is to report in relevant to our business um okay so i think if you really think about it esg considerations are relevant to all businesses and as a start what you can do is like i mentioned in my presentation is to conduct a stakeholder um uh, to identify your stakeholder concerns or do this materiality assessment and then that will help you understand what is the most material uh, topics that are relevant to your industry uh say for example i will take from hema's side we would say water because we are in manufacturing water is a uh, very much a material topic for us or uh, we would consider our electricity consumption again because we are in manufacturing however say you are in um, maybe a tech company then data management the privacy the reliability or the protection data protection is important and also you can look at your evs reduction so i think if you frame your esg reporting around how it's going to strengthen your core business and to create how it will create value to your stakeholders it will immediately esg reporting becomes relevant to your business okay uh, thank you very much for that uh, insightful information so i uh, would like to hear from mr andrew to come again on what is the role of esg in corporate business work can you uh, read a bit about um yeah actually uh, adrian uh, on uh, yeah uh, as we know the esg is a set of standards the policies and matrix used by the organizations and uh, those are really important for the uh, stakeholders uh, within the organization especially the investors to uh, access their assess their impact on both the environment and society if i take an example uh, on my industry uh, if you take these three pillars uh, on the topic the environment and social we uh, been agriculture industry the environment and social especially plantations so for us is the social is more social and environment is more uh, concerned the things that we are engaged in businesses in plantations that uh, uh for if i take an example uh, social is social is for us is in our business not only for uh the people who are working with within our plantations so we are managing more than 13000 hectares the largest uh, uh, extent in the country uh with more than 21000 direct workforce and another 140000 plus plantation workforce the community our uh, responsibility uh, towards uh, the workplace safety and welfare human rights diversity uh, uh, to maintain supply chain relationship uh, uh, all these other topics related to these uh, people and community aspects are really important because for us to maintain a sustainable business drive through our plan our businesses our business operations we need to uh, get this uh, going with a transparent manner especially on the social and also uh uh the environment part because whatever the business decision we are taking that impacts the environment as well because we are using our businesses really integrated with the use of natural resources energy away uh, we really concerned about the waste and also the carbon footprint and especially water use uh within the plantation so uh those uh uh aspects are really matters and for us to have uh, have a esg okay we say the esg reporting kind of the framework is really important for us to collate all those things to a, uh, a formal framework where we can communicate that to our uh, stakeholders and even uh, especially because in our industry uh, roughly about 45% uh, the ground level uh, employees who are working in our states are with lower level of literacy 
how we manage these people within the shareholder uh, circle to uh, give this concepts and why it is important for us our business that is that, that is a really important task for us to sustain our business so in that aspect i think that uh, esg reporting is so important for uh, for business especially in agriculture related uh, for for us to have a, a proper uh, understanding and uh, uh, educating even the uh, 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 the awareness to the rest of the shareholders uh, is really important Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, kind uh, reminder on the questions, Q&A chat box is now active. So you can send us a question, uh, better mention um, to the panelists who are directing the question. Please mention the panelist name and then um, share your questions. So we will take in the next round uh, discussion for Q&A session. Uh, and also it's a kind reminder uh, and also update about our mastercard thank you mastercard for sponsoring this uh, 30 second presentation on evening for managers so with that i move to the third question from the panel the first question was mr adrian Pereira. it's on how do you propose as a professional we can get our companies to embark on this esg reporting journey Okay, uh, Samil, I think uh, the first challenge for young professionals is number one, how to, because at the end of the day, the board has worked too. So, how do you convince a board of directors? I'm not saying everybody, but I would say 50 to 70 percent of them who considers EST as part of just a, another award ceremony or somebody's fashion. Because they are more on numbers. How do you write that report to quantify? Okay, I'm investing in, I'm asking for a budget of 20 million, not for the reporting part. Okay, look at the, like, uh, under the, say, okay, in the case of plantation, we can see a lot of things are going up and down. Definitely, they have to do a lot of things because their work, they are, all their service workers are in low educator i mean not from the well-to-do families okay i look after i need 20 million or 30 million or 50 million to build up put up their houses and to give water right that is the biggest challenge right for the young professionals to convince a board what is the benefit he, he can say okay right these guys are not going to protest they are we are happy with them They'll make sure they'll give the tea leaves. But that's not the case. Like when he goes to a board, it's a different ball game altogether. Right? So you put a board paper, they are going to go. So I think that challenge has to be addressed, number one. I think we need to figure out how to do that one. So that's a, a challenge for the young professionals as uh, accountants. All professionals and accountants, we need to uh, address that aspect to ensure how to convince a board. The other one is definitely the reporting in Sri Lankan countries. That's a bigger challenge than that. It's writing. So, so I mean, that requires a lot of skill. Not only professional, not only number crunching. I would say most of the ESG reporting guys are accountants. So it's not number crunching, it's report writing. Right? And creating measurable, quantifiable criteria. Right? Okay, you give you build up uh, or give water and you can say okay this year we didn't have our strikes or protest in a plantation reduced by 20 percent or 30 percent we had eight last year this year six for example huh? right so we okay the other one is you can say we look, looked after the school we build up a school ensure they had clean water and food their pass rate increased by 10 percent or university entrance or a level right so those are if we can come to that stage i think that would be a real leadership writing is a separate skill that is up to us you learn how to write the esg reporting convincing at the board level it's at the cfo and esg 
head of ESG has to that's a communication skill. So that's a different uh, ball game on. But down the line, in the at the ground level, how do you create measurable targets? Right. We all, so that is a creating measurable targets is a challenge. But you can say okay, it's embedded in our policy, blah blah blah. That's fine. That's fine. You have all the companies say that. As a person who has organized these events, I can say it's all embedded in their policies, right? So th- that's fine. That's all okay. That's I'm a, as accountant, I also have done it, finance guy. <laughs> so that's part of our job. So that's okay, right? So, but making sure that it's at the ground level, it's reflected, and we can measure that. So that is a challenge because you have to understand Sri Lanka is a small society. Right, Sri Lanka small society, and this small society, whether we like it or not, we had one uprising in the north and three uprisings in down south. Sorry, four, including Aragale. Right, some of you guys might not have been born there. Right, so you have to understand that's a danger. We don't want Sri Lanka can't afford to have another uprising. Right. This time it will be against the corporates. It will be a, they'll be facing us. We'll be facing, not the politicians. So we have to be very careful how we play the game. So that creating that measurable target is a challenge, right? So cre- we have to face reality sooner or later, right? The corporate sector also need is responsible for this country's collapse, not only the. Politicians. So, uh, politicians only, I would say, thirty percent, seventy percent is the corporate sector. So, we we created that measurable target. Okay, we are doing this. That society, there's upliftment in the society. Then, and these are our measurable targets. Then, I think, as finance professionals, as responsible citizens, we can. That's leadership. That is the SG leadership. We need to pull into that table. Over to you. Thank you, Adrian. The insightful information. So, uh, this question, uh, Mr. Shani, uh, so how can we get by, especially with all levels in organization, uh, on the ESG initiative? So, how uh, can practically, you know, do it? So. Okay. Thank you. Um... So I think if you look at our senior, if you look at your senior management, I won't spend too much time on it because Adrian spoke a bit about it as well. How to get the buy-in for from it is one thing uh, from a personal experience. I'm saying when you do go to the leadership team, I think it's important to say, show how ESG is important and ESG reporting is important in terms of business continuation, and also to address the environmental and social impact we have on the communities we live in or the communities we operate in so i think once that that is explained the buying almost comes naturally because uh as adrian explained that is as you know if you're a sri lankan corporate in terms of hamas that is responsibility we have then from the second side if you look at all our employees i think it's important that employee engagement in terms of ESG initiatives is important if you're looking at successful implementation of ESG across the business. So one of the things you can do is uh, you can clearly communicate your company's ESG goals and how they com- connect to the overall mission and vision, which each of your employees will be aware of, or they would have some idea of what are those targets that the company is chasing. And also, you need to provide them training. There's no, there's no point, or there, there won't be much success if you just go stay. You know, this is what ESG is, and this is why it's important. But they need to get the relevant training, and there needs to be awareness sessions on why it's important and how it benefits each and every one of them, as well as the communities we operate in. And also to give them the opportunity to take part in some of those ESG initiatives we do. When they have that hands-on experience, they're also able to see the impact they make uh, to the locations or the communities, or even to the environment that they have. And um, I think another thing that is important, and I've seen a lot of corporates do, is they recognize and reward their employees 
who contribute to achieve the ESG goals. And that I think is one of the big key points when you're looking at getting by at all levels. Okay, uh, I think it's uh, lost you. Can, yeah, I hope it's you have answered the question, right? Okay. Right, thank you very much. And uh, the final question on Star with the Gamma Game. So, how business leaders can transform ESG into a competitive advantage and with global challenges? So, if you can elaborate a bit about Yeah. Good question, uh, Musamil. Uh, that is what we need. Uh, why uh, the leadership is there for ESG or so-called ESG reporting? Um, they are on my concern. There are a lot, but I would like to highlight the most important aspect on leadership: is the transparency mm-hmm. on uh, uh, the ESG uh, in the within the uh, within their corporates. Mm-hmm. Why I mention transparency? Uh, why the leadership asking for ESG uh, framework, ESG strategy within the company, or the simply to report ESG uh, end of the day, end of the financial year with the annual reports or whatever? Why? Be- because just merely a buyer perspective or any pressure from the other sh- uh, shareholders, or just to mere just to show the world that uh, we are practicing all these uh, initiatives. So leadership has to be really transparent and communicate effectively uh, uh, within the business uh, environment. This uh, the ESG of this particular company is not just to satisfy these parties or whatever the requirements to satisfy. It is to add value into their business because as I am repeatedly mentioning, we are talking about ESG. That is a basic foundation is the intelligent use of limited resources whatever business we operate in the world we are facing the critical challenges based on this resource utilization so what is the aspects of the sustainability especially uh, uh, the knowledge uh, on uh, how best that we use these uh, limited resources in uh, intelligent uh, uh, use of limited resources and how to sustain the business is depend on how best that the leadership is taking these perspectives into their business. So, uh, so they need to be really clear with their. Um, uh, they need to be with uh, a clear. Um, they need to articulate a clear vision uh, for uh, ESG integration in their businesses. Uh, of course, this has to be include setting specific ESG goals uh, with. Uh, uh, me, uh, with measurables and also aligning uh, those goals with the overall business strategy because otherwise business will run a different uh, direction you you will have a where i have seen these classic examples where uh, being a, uh, evaluator uh, for certain uh, uh, so called competitions and all where we see the uh, yeshi vision is there the company vision is there so you can see it's, uh, two alignments two directions where it has to be really aligned that has to be done through the clear uh, uh, direction by the uh, leadership Uh, of course uh, uh, by doing so uh, by uh, setting specific ESG goals and aligning them with the overall business strategy leaders create a sense of purpose and direction for the organizations a true direction not just really show the show show the world that they are uh, using these strategies, but also to uh, emphasize the importance of ESG in long-term success, not for short-term, just satisfy the short-term goals. So, uh, so I think the leadership has to be uh, there to create this direction, these values, and put um, uh, and and also. Uh, uh, how to turn the burden of increasing ESG regulations into an opportunity because now th- th- there's a burden uh, in the corporate world. How to turn these uh, challenges from this burden into opportunities is also a very important role by the, uh, has to be uh, played by the leadership. So uh, I think there are a lot, but I would like to highlight all uh, on, on high priority basis all those uh, 
those aspects, the leadership uh, involvement in the ESG, in corporate world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now the time to uh, move forward to the third round of panel discussion, that is Q&A. So uh, we have received a uh, few questions and there are common questions also for all the panelists here. So first question is a very common question for three of the panelists. So can uh, from yes, can you can someone uh, mention about some challenges your organization has faced in adapting to ESG reporting? It's a very open question for anyone can answer from panelists. Okay, with the uh, role of uh, my two colleagues from the panel, uh, let me br briefly elaborate uh, we are, when we started a journey in our company about a uh, few uh, decades back, uh, the most, the critical challenge we face within our organization is uh, uh, the critical awareness, the absolute understanding of this concept into the business. So. Uh, Understanding the nature of our uh, business, especially as I mentioned the uh, mentioned previously, uh, the uh, basic understanding uh, and the knowledge and the literacy level and the numeracy level of our people who are working on ground, uh, how best that uh, this awareness has to go from top to bottom and even the feedback from bottom to up, even up to the board level. That was a challenge we faced. Uh, we are, uh, we have actually, we are not 100%, but uh, we really satisfy at this moment. We had a very uh, continuous awareness, uh, uh, even even uh, uh, totally different uh, strategies we use, we are never used in our industry to uh, give the uh, sense of knowledge, because I really believe the knowledge sustainability is just, it's not just you are doing a session today and just forget tomorrow, but how to continuation of regu uh, regular awareness on uh, bits and pieces of this important topic to all the shareholders, all the stakeholders, sorry, all the stakeholders in our business, even a ground level worker, because ground level worker, the operational worker should know what, the, uh, what are these. Uh, and uh, the other, uh, other head, uh, the top level, uh, as Adrian correctly mentioned, for, for us to execute certain things on the ground level, the top approval. Before that, they need to have a good understanding on what, how this integrates into the business values and strategies. So for us, it was a challenge was the knowledge gap. We really fulfill that uh, by our own intensive training programs and awareness program and also uh, 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 different uh, knowledge sustainability strategies we adapted in collaboration with we believe partnerships because uh, you can't run this alone you need partnerships so we utilize partnerships extens extensively especially the new knowledge uh, the tacit knowledge would will never drive only alone that you need to have a good sense of new knowledge science-based evidence-based new knowledge through our uh, various experts and institutions and universities and so on and so forth we utilize, we collaborate, we uh, got all into one, and I think we are uh, success reasonably uh, to drive this strategy within our organization. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anandha Gamage, uh, for answering the question. So, any other panelists uh, want to add uh, your insights on it? Yeah. I would say the biggest challenge when it comes to ESG on a in a practical sense in a company is convincing the board right first one is identifying the project that will give a tangible return because companies should not be run as csr activities it, it's a profit making entity right definitely the investors the shareholders the board is after the ceo ca force and ca said okay give me the budgeted profit now we are going as a cfo or end of uh, esg reporting and said i need to spend 20 million in this village right of course it's going to dent our profits so that is going to be the dilemma that is going to be the challenge for the company these are experiences i have said okay sometimes the board has a different concept i mean different idea when it comes to see 
this ESG. So they are representing shareholders, the institutional or individual. They are they are for profits. But the employees, the CEO, the management team has a different challenge, right? So how do you bridge this gap? And how do you through communication? How do you bridge this gap? And identifying projects, activities, and communicating with the stakeholders like the employees, the customers. How many communi- companies communicate with the customers and ask them, "Look, if you do this, will it help you in your business?" Right. How many companies ask their employees, "Look, tomorrow we are going, going and color washing a school for them. Some it will be a trip, definitely. So that leaves those guys out." or how many will be going because we'll have to go because as part of the push or uh, the boss is there so we need to have that communicate that buy in from the from the bottom if you don't have that buy in from the bottom you are going we are going to it's going to be another reporting award so that communication identifying the projects that are that will bring tangible benefit to the society as well as for the company and communicating that it may not be you will not get the return sometimes overnight this financial year maybe turn two three years down the line to pay dividends so how do you convince a board so that is a challenge for the head of esc ca4 ceo so that challenge i think is like i said is the biggest challenge because when it goes to the board it's three or four guys against a whole heap of seniors sitting around right so that is the biggest challenge most of them don't want to take i think is that that if you can open up and uh, face real i mean uh, solve that problem out if the board is highly educated and they are viewing the view that the esg i think most of these esg programs i think the important thing is more than the the management team going the cfo's the ceos the esg head i think we have to send the board of directors for these programs they should sit in the program and say what is important so board of directors should come into those programs then it will be easy right not the executive directors they anyway will go don't don't so not an executive director can't is them to go for these programs right so i think institute must bring it only way is you can do it through i think cpm and cma and chartered to bring them on to the table you have to bring them to breakfast meeting if they are not going to listen for these things so i can say so to breakfast meetings or something can we them to come on to so you have to brainwash them it's a challenge i must say okay um i think if i could add a one more thing to the conversation that's been taking place um i think if you look at in a pure esg reporting side one of the key things i think not even when you're kind of uh, adapting to esg reporting but i feel like this is a consistent thing each of the each any organization will have is the ever changing landscape of esg reporting because if you take the frameworks like if you take gri which is a well known framework every it's almost every year it changes and there is a new set of guidelines that that's been included and then there's as anurudh mentioned there's double materiality has that has now come into play then there's also ifrs which is again now going to be mandatory for each of the uh, listed organizations in sri lanka to take on from next year so i think uh, one of the a big challenge most of the organizations looking into esg reporting is going to face is to keep up a the demand of our external stakeholders as well as the reporting landscape that keeps changing Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Shani, for that uh, insightful uh, practice practice uh, answer. And also, uh, we would like to uh, thank you for. We are getting more questions, uh, so uh, I will move forward to the next question. Uh, so, how does your leadership team engage with stakeholders? 
so they ask in the perspective of investors employees customers on esg issues like especially when you practice esg uh, reporting so what sort of issues uh, they came across and how the leadership team engaged to solve those issues so it's a very open question anyone can answer from the panel So, I mean, I think uh, my experience, I guess, because when I was doing farms in Jaffna, the first thing I said was, I visited those places as a CEO, group CEO. So, I think the group CEO, then my chairman went. So, that those, because it's a family-owned company, that is the critical thing. I mean, no point the head of ESG going. he can go and say photos and come and say okay i here i am attaching right i think we are looking at environment social and governance right to as understand the environment and social especially right social aspect i think the important thing what i did was okay fine you are telling me we we understand this project has to be done but i need to get the full grips of it to understand the situation there is guys i so but i took the initiative to go there right so like that i think the important thing if a company is really kept the management leadership the management is still in we need to take the the board the leadership team has to go no doubt sir. on that no question on that the board level people must go including the independent people. now new csc rules have come they have told okay the independent directors also have to be thoroughly aware of i mean knowledgeable on the company's activities All right so like that i think the important thing is i guess as independent directors they not to go on a trip i mean fine trip is okay but uh, they need to go and see the ground situation then only they will support the head of esg right so that will be the biggest challenge right so what i did was i went and met the people whom we are we have we want to help right of course i took a translator because i was of conversion in tamil but then we really get to know what is their real situation although we were giving donations and all those things for outsource chicken farming they had they had need was for education they had request for for education so what i did was i arranged uh, to uh, school books and all those things to be arranged as a donation right so fine they need employment we need to keep them in employed self employed but you need to see they have other bigger issues also so then only the the social fabric starts social structure starts picking up so like that i think the important thing get the big guys to go in then most of these things get resolved okay thank you very much so we are moving to the next question um so the question is about uh, now as a leader what sort of future trends do you foresee in es reporting and how is your organization preparing for that uh, again it's a common question direct to all uh, panelists so anyone can answer uh, again uh mr i would say these are all western concept but sri lanka thank god we are blessed we have natural water clean water and we are surrounded by ocean right but we have seen in us and other countries they western country water is a scarce resource is expensive thing, right sri lanka even if you are walking on the road you can give a little bit of water you will give it you are not going to charge that my fellow but in, in the western world you will not get even that right so i would say going forward there is going to be 
ESG is important definitely more than reporting practicing right but we have to be careful in when we are implementing certain things also it can backfire on us like i said some time back a political leader tried to implement uh, organic agriculture which put the whole country on a had to we we created a food scarcity right so we had to be selective what we are selecting from, taking from the west right we have to be selective if you are not selective we can create other social issues right tomorrow we can say no we can cut close up all the coal fire plants and the then how are we going to get the electricity right we can tell we know what happened with organic agriculture it became out of flow luckily the whole country didn't end up burning itself right so like that we had to be selective whatever the west gives we should not take it like ice cream we had to be selective what comes with it like and then like i said even us mike pence he is a vice president he was a vice he was a vice president under trump so tomorrow the us can come and say if trump comes in power look i don't care esg you go by a kind i'm going to implement anybody without esg so they have other vested interest also in that game but we have to be selective and what's good for us so that is a uh, like i said in after this whole thing collapse there was an article in uh, wall street journal how certain person was taken into i mean believing that organic agriculture why sri lanka should adapt right so we had to be careful in what we are selecting whatever the west gives is not to the correct thing we are we have to understand we are a developing country now we are in a worse situation than we were in 2014 or 15 so we have to be careful we are what we are selecting right so that is the critical part that is not only for the corporates is for so also for the regulators okay um so we have another question so uh, what personal experience or insights can you share about leading an organization through the adaptation to esg reporting so any panelists can answer you must start with the damage strike answer um uh, can you repeat the question musamil again i Yeah, what, what personal experience or insights can you share about leading an organization through the adaptation to ESG reporting? Uh, of course. So uh, probably yeah. yeah. Uh, now actually on uh, okay um, ESG uh, ESG uh, if you, uh, if you take the ESG practices or the double ESG practices or whatever. uh esg implementation is one thing the reporting is one another thing because you need to uh, as a compliance uh, you need to report uh, to match with the uh, the common uh, uh, communication platform uh if you see uh, the uh, trend of this uh, reporting framework as well the changes as ishani uh, correctly mentioned every year we see certain upgrades of uh, all these standards uh, now initially we had about uh, we had gri now it's coming to ifrs is one and is two even uh, various other uh, initiatives and also science based targets you analyze and see every year something new comes in so uh, we need to prepare the team need to prepare the knowledge uh, and uh, all those things are really matters if we are if we are really going to match this with Uh, uh, the global compliance requirements so how is that uh, a leader's role uh, to uh, transform this knowledge in a practical sense into the entire team is the most important thing that i believe if we want to have a real absolute sustainable strategy on this esg reporting so uh, just you can just record it but uh, analyzing all those standards and various and and the other end this is my personal thinking what is the end of this uh, uh changes 
I can't see even a practitioner of VHG uh, within this. I can't see next year it will another set of uh, advanced uh, reporting standards. Uh, whom we are going to satisfy? What is the end of this? And also, what is the uh, uh, the equilibrium of this uh, satisfaction? Because uh, uh, we need to invest time, we need to invest other resources, uh, the training on our own people, and uh, satisfy all these compliance and various things. So. End of the day, if you match with your business strategy and the goals and objectives, where is the end of that? End of this uh, uh, dynamic uh, equilibrium. So, uh, the uh, the uh, my perspective is on this is that okay, we need to go. If you are, if you want to have a global business platform, you need to go. But I think we are we need to be very very careful on uh, uh, absorbing and demanding power from our end as well. Uh, okay, we are invest in time and resources into these things and end of the day what we are uh, what are we going to get back so i think uh, where that is where that uh, we need to critically think and practice if we want to have a uh, absolute practical uh, framework of ehg otherwise it's just purely you are reporting as adrian uh, clearly pointed out uh, we see the annual reports are also coming up now uh, it's like uh, pictorial books and various things it's like uh, theses and various things so whatever the people used to put whatever they need whatever they know in their mindsets uh, into the annual reports now it's really deviate from the core objectives of the annual reports as well because need, we need to think that part as well where are we going to end this trend so analyzing all those i think uh, we need to focus that areas as well for us to have an absolute focus the vision of uh, driving esg and esg reporting in uh, the business and leaders perspective is really matters for us to put a line on where to go where not to go thank you Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, again, uh, another question is uh, Mr. Anurudh Gamangir. So, uh, it's a mix of practice and a theoretical perspective, I would say. So, practicing ESG reporting can be successful only if the top management uh, use economic performance management. So, he's quoting Peter Drucker also. Um, so, uh, the question is about what is your perspective on that? Yeah, as I repeated it all, Musamil, you need to have measurables. Uh, that can be leadership or that can be the execution party, but you need to drive with the measurables. Otherwise, just merely practices. Uh, for, an, for an organization, you need to have a uh, proper, if you really want to drive EHG, you need to have a EHG framework and a dynamic team uh, to drive the, uh, the uh, dynamic team, uh, the uh, EHG uh, steering committee to drive that. And that steering committee should not consist on only just the managerial uh, uh, personalities, but the decision makers as well. Because within the committee, you need to take dynamic decisions because if you define, once you define the goals, uh, you need to drive you need to plan you need to execute so for that that you uh, should have a very a good composition within your steering committee and the knowledge is vital for all the people within that up to the top level uh, even the leaders and as uh, repeatedly we mentioned the board level involvement because it's not just to satisfy certain parties or if somebody requested to just to report or whatever no it should not be on that way but it has to be a uh, it has to be within the core uh, skeleton the dna within the business so uh, the question is uh, i believe that you need to add certain things because not only the leadership uh, not only the top management uh, whatever uh, the knowledge has to be there for each and everyone uh, is really really critical uh, brain uh, surgery has to be uh, undertaken within the corporate uh, because uh, uh, it's not only the finance head and the uh, sustainability head is driving this knowledge has to be there with everyone uh, who get engaged in this circle within the corporate so due to the time of interest so we will take the last question so uh, again it's a very open question for any of the panelists can answer do we have uh, corporate frameworks for social impact assessment? Do they define social impact in their business plan? So, anyone can answer.
can you repeat that question please uh, uh, do we have a corporate framework for social impact assessment do they define social impact in their business plans so that is something very very uh, interesting question i must congratulate the guy who wrote that one this is what i have been trying to say look at the day you are, all these guys are getting what is the social impact right what is the social impact of the es es forget about it now leave side right environment we can say we are protecting the water and all that stuff right what is the social impact of any of these things now if you look at uh, if there was a social impact let's look at critically right what is our third largest revenue earner in this country what is the third lag with least an income house made income right the poor people right that is what we are relying every that is i mean every day we are packing them off that part so i think to my knowledge we don't have a framework it's high time the professional bodies start coming out with a framework or whatever they can call it what is the social impact of their esg activity so i to my knowledge we don't have right we can say we reduce the carbon footprint we can we reduce the uh, environmental damage so uh, that part is essential i think for the full corporate sector and for the professional bodies how to come out with the model i am not sure so that, that to my knowledge we still don't have a proper framework for that one measurable framework i leave the other speakers to panelists to answer that question okay uh, so with that uh, answer so we are moving the final round of the panel discussion so it's about key uh, take home message so let's start with mr anudha gamange on your t- take home message for our audience yeah uh, let me summarize into very uh, brief this uh, in because we can talk a lot uh, but uh, we should not uh, download too much on esg to take home because uh, it has to be with core values uh, otherwise um, uh, you will forget the main and you will uh, remain with the unnecessary stuff esg reporting take home messages you practice your own simple way in your corporate don't wait till you are boss or you are director whatever your leadership tells get your own leadership switching off a light unnecessary uh, uh, light in your office also a esc initiate initiative where you can create you are talking about big things within the framework big words terminologies but uh, where we can see a uh, lot of things are coming into annual reports and we are sustainability reports and various things but uh, uh, to work few people you are utilizing the entire ac system you are uh, using entire lighting system in your office but uh, that means you are doing something um totally different on the paper practicing another aspects there has to be a match with what you are doing start with the simple practice where you have to be your own leader don't wait others lead you on esg lead by yourself thank you okay i agree 100% with anurudh so i think uh, forget about esg reporting small companies can't afford to have employ especially csg reporting experts and even a medium company can't afford but i think what is important is the companies and the professionals should start small it may be a small move not planting trees or anything right maybe give you 
help in the cancer hospital maybe help in the helping a school right so like that if the corporate sector i think personally i think this this must be a personal act if we don't have the passion for this you can't do it if esg is just a job for the person then it's going to be a report writing activity it's going to be a fantastic editor right so don't consider that it should be in your blood if you don't have the passion don't take that job take another job so esg if you want to take it as passion put it into your blood and say okay i want this done they know you will fight for it if you don't buy otherwise it becomes a, like i said you become a very good editor a report writer right so don't do that take it to your personal uh, blood in system and see how many projects you can implement and those projects must give some form of return to the society as well as to the company then only you will enjoy it. you'll see some passion and see some fun in it those are the two critical things that i think if you take it to the system i think you might be able to the professionals will be able to take it up most of the time it's another report um i think from my angle first i think i i want to thank everyone for being a part of this amazingly lively discussion um so one of the key takeaways for me i think is to say that you know always remember that esg is not just a compliance it's about embedding sustainability into the core of your business operation and it shouldn't just rely on the leadership team each of you all can be agents of change because um i think each of you can play a role in introducing esg practices to the company and also getting everyone else involved in esg as well um also with that i would like to say please do reach out if you have any questions on any of the conversations we've had and hopefully uh this has been a helpful discussion for you all thank you very much to all the panelists on their take home message and also i would like to again thank uh, uh, our key presenter ms ishani ranasing uh, head group sustainability and corporate communication him as all these for accepting our invitation and presenting uh, the audience and also uh, mr adrian ferreira the non executive director bright flex uh, holdings limited sir thank you very much for your presence and also mr anuruddha gamage head general manager human resources and corporate sustainability kandy valley plantation plc uh, thank you very much again for accepting our invitation and uh, giving and sharing the very insightful uh, as to ours connecting with the audience and sharing the experience and also uh, uh, i must thank uh, professor lakshman arwatwala founder and president cpn sri lanka for hosting this event and also our main sponsor mastercard uh, for hosting this 30 second presentation evening for managers and for everybody uh, will get engaged and we, we we try to answer all the questions you raise through from Q&A chat box and we hope uh, you will get at least one a uh, take home message and you do practice it's all about start practicing so uh, we hope we all enjoyed a very insightful uh, informative session on adapting to esg reporting as a leadership perspective so until we meet and join for another second 33rd presentation of evening for manager thank you very much